Thank you all for coming tonight to our 14th annual Three Small Piggies, the Three Little Pigs adaptation. Um, unfortunately, all of our principal actors fell down, so they can't be here. Our understudies will be taking over, so let's give them a hand. <laughs> That's not what Mr. Pete meant. Calm down, Jill. But that's not what he meant. And action. OK, this is the part where we start to play. Uh, I'm, I'm not in this part, though, so I'm going to go stand over there. Uh, you're, you're probably going to be able to see me over there, probably. But pretend like uh, I'm just not there. I'm going to head over there now. <laughs> This part's very sad. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, uh, a letter. Oh. My dying wish is for you and your siblings to build a house each. One made from straw, one made from sticks, and lastly, one from bricks. But beware of the large, ungood wolf. We can't say Big Bad Wolf because Mr. Peach said we'll get sued and that he cannot return to court. Also, Amy is playing the dead mom, so she's, like, she's not actually alive in this scene. Chris, stop talking to the audience. Go stand in the corner. <sighs> Calm down, it's all right. But Mr. Peach said stick to the script. I know, I know. If only the main cast had it fallen down, you know, we, we wouldn't be in this, in this confused situation right now. Also, I'm still, I haven't done my part yet. It's coming, though. Hey, Chris. Oh, okay. Why don't you step off stage with me? Um, uh, but I, I'm literally not in this part. Come on, bud. Fine. On. Good luck figuring out what's going on without me. I'm not even in this part. Thank you, Mr. P. <laughs> okay. Um, time to build my straw home. Amy, walks the other way now. Walk that way. No, 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 no. Other way, Amy. You had it? Okay. the mom anymore. She's the pig that big that builds a stick house now. Thank you, Chris. Thank, thank you, Chris. Come on, come on. Youngest of the three siblings, Brick from the ABC sitcom The Middle that aired from the years 2009 to 2015. Oh, Mr. Pete, you, you, you don't come on yet. There's a corner over there. You no, no, no! Chris, we do not explain the art to the audience. I am a Broadway viewing director and I have standards. Did you put too much time into your career and neglect your entire family, causing your wife to leave you and is just now willing to let you see your only child? Oh, you mean prop boy? Chris, stop talking! Just, just come here. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm not gonna hurt you. Um, so are you, are you not gonna blow the house? And I blew your damn house down! You happy? 
Um, not really. I feel a bit uncomfortable and in danger. Um, I still haven't done my part, so. Yes, enough. See, don't you just want to bonk him in the throat? I'm sorry, son. Daddy? <laughs> it's okay. I'm here now. I see the light. Yeah, because you're staring into the spotlight. God, am I the only talented one in this family? Pack up your stuff, we're leaving. instead of ale. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. We'll look into that. Oh, no. I like it. I think it's very good, Willis. We need more of it. I second that. The eyes have it. More horse whiz at the brothel. Woo! All right. And next on the docket, we've got... Yeah. A woman. Her... Helena Richardson. Please step up. Hello, gentlemen. I come to you for the 53rd week in a row to ask you this simple, reasonable, humane request. Please, for the love of God, just like, let us vote. Oh, I remember her as a voting girl. <laughs> Please, you just legalized horse whiz to be sold at a brothel. And yet women, even the ones who spend hours in the fields chasing the horses to collect that whiz, don't have a say in the government. <laughs> oh, police. I've been collecting whiz since I was five. From who? You know! Yes, Abraham. We all know. <laughs> Mrs. Richardson, we told you last week, we're moving it up the ladder. Look, I am a mother of nine. I care for them, I feed for them, all while my husband whizzes away our money, drinking whiz at a brothel. I deserve a right to vote. Yes, Mrs. Richardson, I promise we're doing all we can to make this happen for you women. Thanks, you're so 
so great at your job. <laughs> Time for plan B. <laughs> Jeez, what's her problem, right, boys? Oh, you're so <laughs> right. Yeah. Women. Uh, crazy. Well, and women annoy me as much as the next guy, but we should address this. Yes, we should, or else she will come back. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, sir, what, what's your name? Uh, it's Helen... no. Yeah, Helen Richards' daughter. Oh, awesome! A man! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Guys, I've been thinking, and I believe I've come up with a great idea. <laughs> I hope it's not <laughs> gender equality! <laughs> <laughs> No, no, <laughs> nothing that crazy. Now, I propose a, a holiday of sorts as a distraction. What if we give women a day? Whoa, we whoa. Could, yeah, we could call it Women's Day. Bro, what you talking about, Willis? We can't give them a whole day. <laughs> you crazy? A day? For all of them? What's next? A whole month? That could be a step in the right direction. Everyone, please simmer down. This is a democracy. For us. <laughs> yeah. Let's put it to a vote. Good thing there's no women here, right? <laughs> hey, good one, Ezekiel. <laughs> all right, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Nay. Nay. Wait, but it was your idea. Yeah, I was talking crazy. I'm starting to sound like that Richmond soup gal. <laughs> <laughs> but we do need something to appease them, at least the ones we have to go home to. Yeah, my wife's all right sometimes. We have a cool agreement where I drink whiz at a brothel, she cooks me dinner, and takes care of my children. You know, I think mine takes care of my children, too. And she doesn't get paid for it, either. What about, what about, what about, what about women in the workforce day? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we all know what we need to give them. Mother's Day! Voting rights! What? <laughs> what are you? Uh, one of those uh, femalists? Boo! Oh, women! Boo. You're all idiots! Did you guys know that Mother's Day was a thing before women had the right to vote? Happy Mother's Day! Salutations, my name is Thiero Jackson Hahn. Uh, what do I do? Uh, what do I don't do, right? I mean, I'm a student, obviously, but I am an aspiring champion, winner, and standard obliterator. <laughs> and I am also your next fencing protege. You know, this being my final semester at Hofstra, I thought, you know, let me just take it easy, relax, senior year, three periods of gym. But um, here I am, answering the call. <laughs> my future wins me, truly. When I'm not having tea with Roger Federer or Dershowitz, I'm probably here practicing. You know, my daddy built this gym. <laughs> Where is he? I don't know. You may have seen me on the cover of Epe. Yeah, I was one of America's newest, freshest faces of fencing. They're uh, drawn to my, my boyish good looks and my blue eyes, you know? They, they pierce through the mask. Amateurs. It's a cold fit. It's the outfit of champions right here. Ready to go. You know, I'm a lefty. Gives me an advantage. You know, I kind of like, you know, they, they don't see me ever. All right, ready, set. Hold. Try to clean this one, but that's not. What are you trying to do? What are you trying to do? A standard of excellence. They actually, um, they, they wrote that for me when my daddy bought this gym. That's for me. Look at both of them. Okay. Three one of Vanessa. Okay. It's fine. Do you see this? Nobody knows what they're doing. 
They're not even doing anything. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not a good hip, but that's it. Okay. That's a game. Good game. She beat me. No, it's fine. No, it's fine. <laughs> good job, Vanessa. <laughs> We're done here, okay? Everyone's lying to me. Richard and Matt, they think they're they think they're on my level. They're not. Okay, they don't even understand how good I am. They don't get it. Okay? I'm a Blizzard prodigy. I'm, I'm a title holder. I'm a, I'm a champion. I am a standard obliterator. They're wrong. I'm gonna prove them wrong. Mark my words. Introducing Katie Egan. I live in the box, it's just four corners wide. There's a place to roam, I call my own in the box, I stay inside. I live in the box where it's sunny every day. Things never change or rearrange In the box it never rains And in this box They save a space for me I know if I stayed I'd be safe and happy And in this box time what's it like way out there on the other side i live in the box but sometimes i don't belong so if i live outside the box am i doing something wrong because in this box they save a space for me I'd be safe and happy But in this box I need some space to breathe So is it cool if I leave? Please set me free Is it cool if I leave?
Hey, are you logging onto that game tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be on in 10. my parents' permission? My mom isn't home right now, and I'm literally 22. I don't need my parents' permission, but... Hello? Hey, dude, are you on right now? Uh, uh, uh I'm coming. <laughs> All right. I'm on Blizzard, I'm playing the fishing game. Um, you got your parent permission, right? What do I do? This moral conjury is becoming too perplexing. Do I play without the permission of my parents? Do I break the moral codes of Club Penguin? But I heard that there were puffles in this game. One day I could be my very own father to my very own puffle. And what if he breaks my trust in the same way? What if my son? doesn't get his own parents' permission. Circle of trust being broken, so contracts fading away. And for what? To join a club of exclusive penguins? <sighs> that is 10 extra minutes. Can I wait this long? But if I don't, Now, son, remember what we always told you. Always get your parents' permission. Oh, I'm so proud to call you our son. Aww. You want to play some catch after? Boy, do I. I'm sorry, Mom and Dad. Welcome back to Thursday News Break. I'm, you guessed it, Gabe James. And I guess that makes me Maggie Faris. Here are tonight's top stories. Shoppers got a wild surprise when a cat tried entering a grocery store this past week. It is believed he was on the hunt for Fox News anchor Pete Hegseth, so he could kill him after making this comment on President Biden's non-existent mandate to lower red meat consumption. Listen, four, four pounds a year, that's my weekly consumption of red meat, at minimum. The Queen of England awarded the adult sex shop Love Honey an international trade award for, quote, outstanding continuous growth. The business saw exponential growth in the past year, too. A Girl Scout group in Virginia are using drones in order to limit contact while delivering cookies during the pandemic and not in fact to form a Girl Scouts militia despite on locals as wildly believed on a public Facebook page. The Girl Scouts of Virginia did not <laughs> respond to our email asking to clear up this rumor and are now refusing to sell us cookies. I want my damn Thin Mints. As you should, as you should. Police in Nova Scotia were called to a restaurant for a reported COVID violation, but upon arriving, they discovered the culprit in question was just a mannequin. So apparently that's where we're at a year into the pandemic. We can't tell humans from mannequins. Or maybe we're just experiencing a comeback of the mannequin challenge. Remember that one? <laughs> it 
anyway, we only get five seconds of the song before we get copyright infringement and before we lose viewers because the punchline of this joke was 10 seconds ago. Exactly. <laughs> a 71-year-old Florida woman was struck by a turtle after it crashed through her car windshield. Jeez. The woman walked away with a gashed forehead while the turtle suffered only a few scratches to the shell. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles announced in a press conference that there is no affiliation between them and the Florida turtle. We only attack old ladies if they've committed a crime, says Donatello. <laughs> or stole our pizza, added Michelangelo. That's pretty smart. <laughs> a greyhound named Zipping Sarah was revealed to be on meth after winning a race with a $4,000 prize. And yeah, dogs on meth does sound kind of crazy, but it was a greyhound. Like, come on, greyhounds really are the crackheads of dogs. <laughs> If you told me a dog was on meth, I would no doubt know it's a greyhound before you even finish the sentence. I mean, look at them. I could not agree more. After gaining more free time during the pandemic, a 12-year-old from North Carolina decided to enroll himself in a few extra classes. A year later, he is ready, he's getting ready to receive his high school diploma and associate's degree. Come on. I couldn't even learn how to bake bread at 12, and young Sheldon over here is collecting two diplomas at once? Like, he's 12. He can't even legally work yet. You know what? Congrats, nerd. You played yourself. It's a mistake. It's a mistake. <laughs> In other news, the film bros are fuming. A misplaced review from 80 years ago for the film Citizen Kane was added to Rotten Tomatoes, resulting in the film's tomato meter score dropping to a 99%. <sighs> To add insult to injury, Paddington 2 is now the website's highest rated film with a perfect 100. <laughs> Here to comment on this recent victory is the bear himself, Paddington. Yeah. Paddington, hi. How are you? Hello, loves. I'm doing quite all right. I'm so glad to hear that. So you've overtaken Citizen Kane. Wow. What are your thoughts? Oh, well, no surprise there. That <laughs> film puts me to sleep faster than narcolepsy. I <laughs> don't think you can say that. <laughs> Just did, love. <laughs> but you know, it, it's nice. It's like I'm finally getting the recognition I deserve. You know, after my stint in prison, it's nice to finally win. That's right. You were wrongfully convicted of theft in uh, Paddington 2. What was that like? Well, <laughs> the guards put me in charge of laundry. Paddington doesn't know how to do laundry. Paddington's a bear. Paddington doesn't even wear pants. <laughs> yes, <laughs> unfortunately, I noticed that. So what kept you going during these hard times? Uh, well, the, the knowledge that I was innocent was a big motivator. Mm -hmm. Plus, I had a little lady on the side. Ooh. Paddington, a girlfriend? Who is she? You might have uh, heard of her. Her name is Mary Kane. She's quite the looker. Kane. Kane. Mary Kane, Kane, as in the mother of the guy from Citizen Kane? Uh, yep. I stole his number one spot and his rosebud. <laughs> his <laughs> rosebud. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, haven't you seen the film? You know, the, the whole rosebud yeah, thing is supposed to symbolize the love for his mother that he never gains, you know, yada, yada, yada. Sure, sure. Well, I gained it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Paddington, maybe you're not as sweet as we all thought you were. I guess not. Mm, well, yeah, the, 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 the hat fools everyone. I mean, the ladies love it. They all call me uh, Daddy Paddy. Uh, all right, <laughs> well, on that note, we will say goodbye to Daddy Paddy. Goodbye, <laughs> loves. I'm off to hang with your best mates. Uh, Ed Sheeran, Russell Brand, Piers Morgan, Boris Johnson. <laughs> of course, why not? Who nice. else? See you later. Okay, bye. bye. What? Is he part of like, like a British boy, boys club? I guess we'll never know. <sighs> that red hat. But like, why a hat, but no pants? Why no pants? I don't know, Gabe. I really don't know. <sighs> Actor Michael B. Jordan reportedly trained for months to execute the underwater plane crash scene in the new movie, Tom Clancy's Without Remorse. It would have taken a lot longer to train, but luckily, Jordan already had extensive experience holding his breath while wet. <laughs> there you go. Reese's had partner, has partnered with makeup company Hip Dot to make chocolate flavored makeup products. Reese's rival, Nestle, plans to compete with this business boo by not doing that. <laughs> that's pretty smart to me. <laughs> well, that's all for Thursday News Break. I'm Gabe James. And for the last time, I'm Maggie Faris. Wait, this is your last time going by Maggie Faris? <laughs> no, Gabe, this is my last show. It's May, it's graduation time. Uh, oh, yeah. Right. Well, right. I'm going to miss you, Maggie. It's been an honor working the desk with you. Oh, I'm going to miss you too. Good night, everybody.
five minute DIYs has the perfect solution for you. <laughs> Step one, take that doll you always have lying around. I don't have a doll. Okay, step one, get a doll. If I'm going to the store, why wouldn't I just buy a new hanger? Step one, get a doll. <laughs> okay, I guess. Now that you have your doll, step two, rip her head off. Rip her head off? What? I just bought this. Yeah, and now it's going to be a hanger. So get your rage on and rip her head off. Next, you're gonna get her torso <laughs> off. Why is this so violent? It's the only way. It really isn't. Step four, you're gonna glue her head back onto her body. Back onto her body? That's it. You now have a perfect <laughs> hanger. Unique, stylish, and most of all, convenient. guys got that new shipment of Frum's canned sardine and chicken liver? Oh, you must be a regular regular. Oh, you could say that now. How's about you show me to that wet goody good stuff? Oh, right, right this way, sir. Thank you. Oh. So, um, what's the little guy's name? Oh, legally I can't have this. No, I, I mean, uh, you're, who you buying for? Oh, Rodney. Oh, um, okay, well, um, that's a cute name. <laughs> Thanks, no one's ever called me that. Oh, I'm a little basic. I, I just I just went with Max. Really? You don't look like a Max. Oh, n not me. My my dog. Oh, right, right. <laughs> so, uh, the, the food. Um, what were you thinking? Uh, how much does Rodney weigh? Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's not a very polite question to ask, lady. Come on. Um, I I'm sorry. Um, is is he is he small, medium, or large? Just use your judgment. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I have the new um, turducken flavored biscuits. If you could just sign here. What you doing there, little guy? Uh, do you want me to call the authorities? Oh no, that's just Radney. Oh, all right then. Wait, wait, wait. Have a good one. You you named your dog after yourself? Oh, well, I'm deathly allergic to dogs. That's why I keep all these EpiPens on me. <laughs> buying the dog food for? Me. I should have taken the job at the bowling alley. I skipped out on free nachos for this. <laughs> it's okay, Ronnie. Don't feel bad. All right, thanks. Well, really, Monica? Really? What? Are you serious? Chocolates? Look out, we got a comedian over here. How dare you? How dare you? Chocolates, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Monica, darling, show me to the new selection of catnip, please. Of course. <laughs> oh, so that's how it's gonna be. <laughs> yeah. Did, 
I knew I should have charged this. No, not this. Not this. All done. Uh -huh. No more. You think you're just the cat's meow, don't you, Todney? Your bark is bigger than your bite, Rodney. <laughs> Dress up like animals. Can't say I haven't done it myself. But I draw the line when it comes to you rustling and tussling in my store. Animal control, we got a nasty one. A 1919. Mr. Bow That was my only choice. Now you two either make up or make out before I euthanize you. Get Pesky furries, huh? I know. I'll see ya. So weird. I'm here on the streets of Hofstra University, looking to ask the Hofcats the pressing questions of today. Kitties on the street, street, street. Let's see if we can find any. Oh my God, two. Do I have a treat for you guys? Oh my God, three. I see you're not wearing a mask. Are you an anti-masker? <laughs> Perfect. Were you invited to Bernie Madoff's funeral? <laughs> Oh, I struck a nerve. It's probably morning. I'm just gonna sit right here. Come eat. Let's just be friends. If I leave everything to you in my will, will you love me forever? What are your thoughts right now? Just anything, first thing that comes to your mind. So true, bestie. Would you be interested in paying my student loans? <laughs> These cats must have publicists that want them to stay quiet on the issues. Do you think Keanu Reeves can really avoid bullets like that? <laughs> Do the Hofcats secretly run the school? <laughs> what is your favorite Heat Network show? He said Thursday Night Live, so that's really neat. Heard it here first. Hello, who is your least favorite billionaire? Mine is all of them. Do you guys have a least favorite billionaire? I have accidentally found them all. Imagine if I was allergic to cats. This would be a really bad moment for me. Sir, who did you vote for in the 2020 election? Have you seen the Cats musical movie? This is probably the best moment of my life. Uh, Ma'am, has anyone ever told you that you look like Millie Bobby Brown? <laughs> you look kind of like my old cat, Joey. Are, are you him? <laughs> no, you're not a Persian cat. I'm scared. It looks like I've exhausted the kitties. Time for a cat nap. Okay, brace yourself. Oh, and don't say the E word. What's the E word? It's too late, they're here. Ah, uh, Julie, Jules, ah. Uh, uh, you're even more beautiful in person. 
Yeah, Buzz, this must be your girlfriend, Julie. We've heard so much about you. Good things, I hope. <laughs> take a seat. Ah, but don't take it with you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so. You two uh, are lesbians. Robert, <laughs> you can't just ask them if they're lesbians. I mean, obviously they are, but. Uh... Sorry, sorry. So, uh, do you like baseball? So, I know, I, softball. Do you like <laughs> softball? Um, you guys have a lovely home. Is that an emo poster? Oh, yeah, yeah. Big My Chemical Romance fans here. Yeah, take me down to the Black Parade. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and Elmo? La 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 la, la 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 la, Elmo's world. <laughs> Wildly different tastes and a lot of singing. Stop it. <laughs> and I love your eels. Of course, the elephant in the room. <laughs> Those are some primo eels right there, top of the line. Hey, good job, Samantha. This girl's got some great taste if she can recognize great eels like that. I told you not to say the E word. The E word is eels? Yes, Mom! <laughs> I can't stand those freaking eels! What are here now, Gina? Mom, Dad, not this fight again. I can't sleep in this house with them slipping and sliding around the damn aquarium. What, I'd rather sleep with them than sleep with you. <laughs> what is going on? about this for years. He wanted the eel. She did it. Classic family drama. Patty and Rosie bring me so much joy. That's what I wanted to name our kids, but you said no. But that's good enough for the damn eels? I was saving the names for something special. I want, I thought you'd appreciate that. Dad! But no, you don't appreciate anything. Do any of our neighbors have eels? No, none, nada. I work my ass off for these eels. They're a 10 to 15 year investment Can max. Make it one more day in this house. I've had enough. Hey, stop that. I tap it on the floor. Don't you not do that. I'm stressing them out, Gina. I swear on you, he's Papa's gonna sing you a lullaby. Eels torment me day and night. They're living monuments to our failed marriage. Hey, they're a part of this family. More so than Julie. Hey, I mean, I still kind of feeling this relationship out. Could you have had a normal midlife crisis? Oh, what, you'd rather I slept with the neighbor? Yeah, it would have voided the prenup. Okay, okay, everyone be quiet for a minute. So you guys have eels? He has eels. Okay, um, why eels, Robert? Their toothy grins remind me of my beautiful wife. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> See, look at that! And Gina, don't, don't you have any quirks? Well, <laughs> you do put up with my Vladimir Lennon body pillow. <laughs> I mean, I always loved you more than I hated sleeping with Lennon. <laughs> Now, Gina, don't you think you could be that gracious towards your husband? I guess so. Oh, Gina. Oh, Robert. Wow, you just saved my parents' marriage. All in a day's work. Thank you, Julie. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, so. You like carpentry? <laughs> Sarah Paulson? <laughs> TNL Most Wanted site. www.have you seen this man at tnl.com. We're Emmy winners. I can do what I want. And I think I know how to EGOT. Take a look at this.
killed two of your soldiers, and I'll kill you too. Unless you tell me what your platoon is planning. <laughs> Staying quiet, huh? See how that worked out for your friends? I won't stop. I'll find more of you. Are you really willing to die for this? I'm giving you five seconds. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Ben, this is basically the same thing as last time. Except now he's grizzled. Years of war have okay, gone. I both don't understand and don't care. It's, it's a grape. It was a grape. Captain Harvey, oh no! Private, I don't think I'm gonna make it. Captain! No! My whole life is flashing before my eyes. The time I was five, the time I was six, now, it's up to you now, Private, to save the humans. <laughs> Captain Harvey? I know what you're gonna say. They're wearing masks, but the grapes aren't wearing masks. They're SAG Astra, they asked for it. Okay, that person literally turned into a grape. It's topical. I call it the grape Rona virus. I'm gonna press play, so I don't have to address that. Oh, please don't turn me into a grape. I would never do that, for as you see. You are my grand great papa. You're my grandfather, David. I, you gave birth to me. What the? <laughs> okay, Ben, this is getting past our PG limit. PG-13 at most. Oh my god. When did you change into that? <laughs> I was waiting for the climax. This is when you learn that David is bi -grapeful. He's bisexual? <laughs> no, I see the confusion, though. His mother is a green grape. And his father, played by yours truly, is a purple grape. I am appalled. <laughs> hey, Ty. Is it, is it my time yet? I, I, I play the mother. <laughs> I'm the only human alive. Oh, David, you're not alone. You have all of us, your great grand grapes. <laughs> Ty, Tyler, we bought two $40 crepe costumes, plus tax, plus balloons that were supposed to go in these holes that I couldn't even blow up. I didn't have the time. I know it doesn't look like grapes, but Ty. I bought this all from the TNL budget. What am I supposed to do? A what? Never mind. This is like, I this is like my dream. I need this. Okay. I don't even know why I watched this for so long. This is never airing anywhere. Okay. I see how it is. Let's go, Matt.
technical difficulties. Rudy! So sorry about that one, boss. Uh, the script must have brought it from Studio C, you know, where they do that, uh, that S-E-X talk show. Oh, that was great. I love it. I love you. Oh my goodness. No, it was not. No, it was not. Don't do that. Oh, get it together. Rudy, never again. Double check what script you hand me next time. Now please, get out of the shot. Okay, uh, here's the correct script. So sorry about that, ma'am. Sorry about that, friends. You see, we share this studio with many, many others. It won't happen again. <laughs> please don't cancel my show. Ah, uh, right. On with the show. Hey, do you like toys? Remember what I remember when I was a little girl? I was a fan of the good old Slinky. Why don't we take a look at this summer's hottest toys? All right, let's see what what we got here. A brand new. Oh my goodness! What, what, what is it? It's a dildo. A what? It's a dildo, Bill. A damn dildo. That is great. How clever! Maybe we should stop the live feed. Stop! No, no, this isn't bad! It's different! I love it! No, sir, that is bad! Yeah, that's what I'm saying! Oh, this is a show for kids, not sexually confused teens, porn hookers, or retired old men reminiscing what it's like to have an orgasm! Oh my god, there's someone at the door! Oliver's crap! My name is To Watch. I'll Ike To Watch. I'm with the FCC, Mrs. Podgers. <laughs> Children, the FCC stands for the Federal Commi Communications Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, they're the people who could cancel us. Can you say cancellation? Cancellation! cancellation. Good! My, my, Mr. To Watch. You really did get here fast, didn't you? Indeed I did, and for good reason. I mean, Dildo? Really? Such words cannot be spoken on broadcast television until 11 a.m. on ABC when Whoopi Goldberg starts talking on The View. I love The View. Bottom line, Mrs. Podgers, you're very close to having a one-way ticket to the unemployment office. Uh, speaking of traveling, uh, let's take a detour of delusion to the cul-de-sac of creativity. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to stick around because I don't trust you, and after all, I like to watch. <laughs> okay, kitties, uh, you know the drill? To the cul-de-sac we go where the creativity will flow. Oh. I'm gonna make you a banana split! Oh, peel me like the gorilla at the DC Metro Zoo, baby! Oh, yeah! Oh, give it to me again! You're a rotten little banana! Oh, I know I am! I'm gonna have to throw you in the compost when I'm done with you! Oh, whip me, spank me, do it all! Oh, potassium! Oh, yes! Oh, oh, oh. Yes, yes, yes! Great, great, great! I love it! Oh, my goodness! No, no it, it was, was not great, great, great! Yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't think so either. All right, you know, th that's it. Podgers, you're done, you're out, come on, to uh, the parking lot. No, uh, great! Well, bye, kids! Remember to brush your teeth and lie to the authorities! That's it, that's it. Ladies first. Now who's gonna host the show? I have some friends at the studio next door. They'd be happy to help. Who's hungry? <laughs> Let's make a banana cream pie. Oh, 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 um, hey, um, do you mind if I stick around a little longer? After all. I like to watch.
<laughs> Once again, again Katie Egan. <laughs> <laughs>